I was growing up, my mom listened to a lot of John MacArthur, and so, you know, by extension, I listened to a lot, too. Um, in my college years, uh, and, and soon thereafter, I uh, actually became a Christian, started listening to what, what we started calling the New Calvinist, um, John Piper, uh, Driscoll, uh, Chandler, Tim Keller, that kind of, that kind of group. And because those, those people were referring to themselves as Reformed or Calvinist, um, I kind of started referring to myself as that as well. Um, my beliefs really kind of lined up with them, and they were using the term to mean people who uh, you know, believed in the five doctrines of grace, the five points of Calvinism, or TULA. So since then, I've studied more, I've read more, I've, I've prayed more, and by God's grace, I came to a fuller understanding of theology, and uh, at this point, I, I would actually be Reformed. I'm specifically Presbyterian, and I hold to the Westminster Standards. And the more I think about those days, the more, the more I'm convinced that I was really being dishonest in saying I was Reformed. And, and what I mean by that is this. I wasn't intentionally lying. Uh, that, that didn't happen. It, it wasn't that I was trying to put a label on myself that didn't exactly fit. But it was that I was embracing this title without, without making the effort to understand it. And I think as Christians that we should be doing better than that. I think that when, when we value truth, when we value honesty, Part of that means that if we're going to speak to something, we really should know what we're talking about uh, before pretending that we do. Now, and I'm saying all of this, I'm not one of those people who dislike labels. I actually love labels. Um, I, I long for the day that uh, that Christians are, are united uh, in truth, um, but and and that we could only wear the label of Christian. But until that day. Labels really shorthand conversations really nicely. If I meet somebody that says, you know, oh, I'm, I'm Lutheran. Okay, I have an idea of what that means. I'll probably ask a follow-up question to figure out if they're uh, liberal Lutheran or conservative Lutheran. And once that's answered, I know, I, I, I have a really good idea about their theology. Now there's going to be nuances, of course. Then they're going to find out I'm Reformed. If they know what that means, they're going to, our, our conversation is going to be a lot shorter. We know where each other stands. I think that's a very good thing. Um, it also, you know, when you're visiting somewhere and, and looking for a, a church to attend, it, it, it really helps to narrow down the field quite a bit. So I'm a fan of labels. But when we use a label so much and so wrongly that it, that it ceases to mean anything, then that's a problem. And I think we're doing that. In the, area, in the error that I fell into back then, I see a lot of people falling into it. And for those people, I would just encourage you to figure out what Reformed means before you say you're Reformed. Or figure out what Calvinist means before you say you're Calvinist. There's a whole set of doctrines that go along with it. And that doesn't mean that there's not nuances. And that doesn't mean that there might not be a difference of opinion in one area or another. But there is a foundational set of doctrines. For the first part, being Reformed is to be confessional. And historically, the Reformed have always pointed back to a confession. Now, uh, most of the time, that's either the Westminster Standards or the Three Forms of Unity. There are, there are other uh, lesser-known ones as well. Um, on the Reformed Baptist side, and I'm not one of the people who uh, don't like that term. I, I think it's a fine term. Uh, but there are, but you, you would need to be confessional on that side, too. And the most popular there is the 1689 London Baptist Confession. Um, but there are others there as well. A big part of being Reformed is covenant theology. And in fact, in R.C. Sproul's book on what is, uh, what is the Reformed faith, um, I thought he narrowed it down too much. But in there, one of the major points was covenant theology. And so a dispensational uh, pastor like John MacArthur can totally believe in, um, in the doctrines of grace, in the five points of Calvinism. But he can't be reformed because he's dispensational. The, the whole system goes against what we 
uh, believe, teach, and confess. And then there are other points too, and other points that might have, um, you know, small differences of opinion. Um, someone who is reformed is going to believe in pedo baptism. If you don't believe in pedo baptism, then you might be reformed Baptist, but you're not purely reformed. The reformed have some concept of Sabbath. There's differences of opinions on what, what that all that entails, but that is a part of our confessions. The regulative principle of worship is part of being reformed. Being a cessationist is part of being reformed. And, and like I say, there might be, there might be slight differences um, from person to person, but when you disagree with the, ma the vast majority of what we confess, then you're not reformed. When I see people online who uh, you know, believe in the continuation of the, of the uh, apostolic gifts, who uh, are, uh, are Baptist uh, when it comes to baptism, um, who do not hold to the regulative principle of worship, who do not believe in the primacy of preaching um, in worship, who deny uh, the Reformed Church government, who are perhaps dispensational, and, all, and then they believe in the five points of Calvinism, it's like, oh, I'm Reformed. It's like, I don't think you understand what that word means. The term means something. When, when we, when we, you know, we get all, we get all annoyed when liberal Christians who deny everything about Christianity call themselves Christian. We get annoyed at that because they don't seem to understand what the word means. And at the same time, you, people and me in the past were misusing uh, terms that have a definition, that have a meaning, and that are important. In, in identifying what we believe. And we should be seeking better understanding than that. There's also another reason that I think that, that you should read more about this. And it's because the depth and scope of Reformed theology, which I believe is the most biblical theology, which is why I'm Reformed, um, the scope and depth goes so much farther than the doctrines of grace. It's so much more full and enriching. And in fact, I, I mean, if you take Reformed theology to the extent that it should go, it does become a whole life theology, not just dealing with how you were saved and why, but what, what constitutes uh, your being where you are right now to your family, to the way you work, to the way you worship, to, to the, the reason to get out of bed in the morning. It truly is a whole life theology that, that really should uh, affect the whole person and sanctify everything we do to the glory of God. Now obviously that's, a, that's, a, that's an ongoing process and I'm not there yet. But part of that journey is to know our Lord and Savior better. That's the point of theology. And so I, I do this video to first to get us to start using words properly, but also to, if you are one of those people who, who just recently in the last few years have embraced the doctrines of grace, keep going. There, there's, a lot more, there's a lot more than that, and that's the surface of it. And so, keep studying, keep reading, keep praying, keep asking for God's grace in theology, and you're going to be opened up to how deep the richness and glory of God really is. Thank you all for watching this particular rant. Please subscribe below. Um, let, let me know what your thoughts on this, and I'll see you next time.